hello beautiful souls i'm like <laughs> i love spirit so much i love my job so much and i'm hello welcome to the new people welcome back for those of you who've been here done that bought the t-shirt um thank you so i'm I'm just in a little bit of a shock right now because, you know, I love to play with music and spirit and all that good stuff. So I just have to show you this. So, you know, my phone's on shuffle and I do it for a reason because I can't force it to do that. Even though I do have gifts and powers, it's like sometimes when it's raining, Bubba will be like, Meow. and I'm like, I'm like, I'm not going to change the weather just for you, Bubba. And she's like, why not? And I'm like, we're not going to do that. Like we could, especially with, with me, her and Alder are here, whatever, wherever two or more gather, we're all so fucking witchy and powerful. We could absolutely shift the fucking weather. I've done it uh, as raw comes out. Uh, anyway, so I'm just like, in awe right now because Wish You Were Here is the last song that just came on and Spirit said, um, look at the release date. And I was like, what are you talking about? And then I fucking see this and it's like September 12th, 1975. Today is September 12th, 2024. I mean, 49 years ago, 49 also comes out to the number 13. Tomorrow is the first Friday the 13th of the year. We haven't had a Friday the 13th of the year yet. And the only other one is on my birthday in December. My soul sister's birthday. Oh my gosh. You guys, so much is happening right now. So much is happening. So I wanted to talk to you about some things that are happening. We're wrapping up self-care summer. How was your summer? Feel free to comment below. Tell me about it. Did, what What did you learn? What did you let go of? What are you, what are your new, um, what are you looking forward to? Uh, I know for myself, I've been through so much. I've been through so much. My, my partner and I, we have been through so much. Bubba has been through so much. It has been one of the most transformative years of my life. And of course the year of the dragon, you know, I've, I've told you guys before. I know I like, I, you know, when you just know something like I've been a dragon, I've either been a dragon rider or I've been a dragon. I'm pretty sure I've been a dragon though, because I've seen me green. I've seen myself as a green dragon. I've seen myself as a red dragon. I've seen myself as a black dragon. So either those are my spirit guides or that's me. But so I wanted to talk to you about the energy that's being put out right now and how it's going to amp up like a motherfucker. I mean, think about this for a second, okay? In real time, we are right around the corner from the full moon in Pisces, partial lunar eclipse. We are in the shadow of eclipse season. So whenever we're in eclipse season, a lot of things become uncovered. And a lot of things that were in the shadow all of a sudden are illuminated. And I feel that there's just been so many things. I mean, I've recorded so many videos for you guys that I don't know if they will ever see the light of day, but I've recorded so many. I hope you know that I've been with you. I've been, if you've messaged me, if I haven't responded to you, it's because I'm not supposed to. And I don't know if it's ever or just right now or whatever. Um, also, I apologize for my appearance. Um, I know I may seem, I almost look sickly. I kind of feel sickly to myself. I'm going through a major transformation again, and not just that, but um, whenever I'm going through these transformations, I don't sleep very well. And I get the vibe I'm not supposed to. Every time I'm like, I'm done with processed foods, I'm going back all natural, and I really mean it. <laughs> I really mean it at the time, you know? Um, then spirit will like throw certain foods into my orbit, and I'm like, why? But then I'll eat it and then I, I enjoy it. But then afterwards I have like a food crash, but the food crash is usually what helps me really like spew it out, so to speak. And in my natural state of my warrior, my natural state of my, I shouldn't say my warrior is my natural state that let me, let me back up in my natural soul state of love and kindness and happiness and joy. This is real. This is me. This is me. That's why I just put out this shorts. I don't know when or if this will ever hear, but I just put out a shorts recently. This is me. I did like five takes of that song, but they had me do that one. All of them were different. I was wearing kind of the same outfit, um, but it was just me playing with it. But it was also um, like, I feel like that bull that's in the pen that I'm just like, let me out, let me out, let me out, let me out. Let me out. You know, like I have so much to say. I have so much to say. I have so much to do. I have so much to do. Ah, but I've been getting this vibe from spirit. It feels like the end of a moon cycle. It feels like the rest and restore phase, even though we are in, in real time, they had me pull my calendar. 
We're going to jump around a lot because there's so much to talk about. Um, so in real time, it's the 12th, but so when was the, yeah, I, I was just going to say, I'm like, when was the first quarter moon? It was yesterday on the 11th. Hmm. Interesting. So now we are past the, you know, the first quarter moon, which is usually about taking action towards whatever, you know, manifestations you are putting out into the universe in the new moon. Um, and then by the full moon, it's the celebration of usually by the full moon, you'll get a glimmer or a glimpse of whether or not you are going to come into fruition with your new moon manifestation. But remember, it's like the ancient star queen always says, uh, Erica, she's so amazing. But, um, you know, she said, you don't order your food at a restaurant and then go in and keep pestering the chef until it's done. You sit your happy ass down, you wait, right? Like you're sitting in your chair, you're waiting. You're not going to go and get in his business, right? You're like, you put it out there. You trust that the chef is going to make your food the way you want it. If the food comes in, it's perfect and everything's wonderful. You know, you're good. If the food comes out, it's not the right order. You asked for no, whatever, or they didn't tell you something's in it. And you're like, I'm allergic. It didn't say that. And they're like, oh, I apologize. You know, um, that kind of thing is, you know, it's like, it's not saying that your manifestation isn't going to happen. It's just saying it's not going to happen just yet. You may have to wait a little bit longer. Maybe they got to get new ingredients. They got to start over, you know, divine timing is everything. So I have, I really genuinely have not been this connected to an election since the, I don't even like to say their name, but I will just say the gentleman running for president and that's really being kind. Um, but that person that's running for president, but I'm great. I'm in gratitude for them too, right? Because they've uncovered so much slimy, sleazy, gross shit. And let us know that, you know what? There are a lot of them, but there's more of us. So with that being said, um, I haven't been this close to an election since they ran against, since it was a divine feminine and divine masculine running against each other. Let me just say that outwardly. What we see is a man and a woman. So now this time it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different, isn't it? There's so many reasons why it's different. And I'm not going to get into all of them, but I feel like Let's put it this way. Whatever happens, I know will be meant to happen. Whatever happens will be what's meant to be. It takes a long time to change someone. I have been watching the people that I love. You know, a lot of times I end up uh, going through things first before other people do so that I can hold space for them and keep the vibrations high. You know, you guys are all holding the vibrations, keeping it high for me, you know, but then when you're going through your shit, I'm like, I got your back, right? Like that, cause that's what it's for. That's what community's for. We're energy, we're all energy. And so, you know, it's interesting. Um, recently I was talking to a new friend and I said something about walking each other home and she's like, I don't like that term. <laughs> and I was like, why? And they explained why. And, and, um, and it made me think, yeah, I think that's a term that has been programmed in me too. It's a kind of a, it, ironically, it's kind of biblical because this person um, is very, very devout Christian as they, um, I'm paraphrasing, but I'm pretty sure that's what they said. But what I started to realize was lately spirit has been inundating me with religious people. Old school. Some open-minded, some not so open-minded we, uh, Alder and I, I haven't been giving you guys a lot of my personal stuff because I, ge I genuinely feel like when you're really working on something, it's best to keep your cards close to your chest, right? Like you don't want to like put it out into the universe and say, you know, uh, here everybody, you know, blah, 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 because there's a lot of vampires out there that will feed off your energy that really enjoy feeding off of your energy as well, by the way. Um, because why would they want to do the work when you're going to do the work for them? Why would they, you know, want to stop doing something if you're just going to keep allowing it to happen? If you allow somebody to continue to abuse you, they will. So in my 
journey this self-care summer of going through all of these different things right um basically since the first eclipse season began and that mercury retrograde energy and then to now we just had another mercury retrograde and then we're gonna have another eclipse season the next mercury retrogrades mid-december i think it's actually either the day before my birthday or the day after it's somewhere on there somewhere around there but you know, I've learned over the years to really love Mercury retrograde because it gives us a reset. It gives us time to kind of slow down and see things in slow motion and see things as they really are. And I think what I think what's going to happen and what I hope and believe will happen is that over this summer I have gone through so much of my own stuff and I've had to face so much of my own shadow and my own darkness. I had to really learn how to love myself and care for myself because when my mother passed, well, when I found out my mother was, when I, when, when it was confirmed that my mother was ill, even though I felt it last year, even though it was confirmed, um, it just set off a spark in me. And that was at the end of spring because that happened literally like 10 days before summer came in. And now here we are next week is the fall equinox. So very interesting so now we're in autumn and i've just run the gamut and i've had the privilege to really understand grief and death and to go through you know finding out that my mother was ill every day this torture of wanting to call her every day her coming into my dreams into my music i could feel her i could feel her begging me to come home i could feel it was like it was uh i'm trying not to get too emotional difficult I watched this funny thing the other day about Emily Blunt and Tom Cruise talking about a movie they made together and she's like he never complains he's and she's like but we were in a situation that was it was just really uncomfortable physically emotionally mentally it was just um, and, she said, and at one point she goes I looked over and Tom's like pouring sweat and she's like are you okay and she's like it's okay to say this sucks it sucks you know and he goes it's challenging He's just trying to stay in a high vibration as much as possible. And I love him for that. And that's what she said too. She was like, that's what I love about him. She's like, he tries so hard to stay in a high vibration. So in some, and sometimes when I think about that and, and that whole religion too, that always makes me think. But anyway, and whether they like it or not, a religion, if you look up the term, in, the term for religion, yes it is. <laughs> um, that's why when people are like, are you Wiccan? I'm like, no, it's a religion. I'm a spiritual, natural witch. So, um, yeah, so basically just like battling all that and then coming to uh, the knowledge that my mother did pass. And now it's coming up on um, almost a month that she's passed. And that has been a challenge as well. Even though people have offered, you know, to counsel or be there for me or whatever, I just... It's really nothing I can go through except alone. Um, recently, Alder and I had some things happen where we kind of came back together and we felt really good and things were good. And then some stuff happened and it just, I did a video about it. I don't know if you'll ever see the light of day. I was so angry and I, I think really those kind of videos are really for me just to like, it's like therapy, you know, because I don't want to put it under the world. However, um, everything I did felt whatever that I was going through was very valid. It was very valid. And so we backed off the romance again and I'm like, we're not ready for that, you know? And so I'm, and I started to realize the closer it's been getting to eclipse season, the more I'm like, he's been distancing himself and I've also been like yeah that's probably not a, it probably is a good idea for us to keep our, our, our distance for a minute you know very interesting so the one thing that we have kept constant is that we've been kind of casting our net out to where do we want to live where do we want to be you know because you know where I live in the Pacific Northwest it gets to it. We've been living off grid now for over two years and we did, you know, last, the first winter off grid was one of the hardest times of my life. Uh, it was really, really horrific and awful, but we got through it. And then the next winter we stayed in the cabin that we were, you know, in uh, a rental agreement, a rent to buy situation that fell through. And 
that was like literally like ripped out from under us and then it was like the game just kept changing with this person and it was really Well, I'm by a freeway, but also I'm right by an, an international airport. So, <laughs> it's like, um, but anyway, I digress. So, so even though we were off grid last year, we were in the cabin, and even though it wasn't the most ideal, it was still nicer and much cozier having a wood stove for the winter than it was, you know, trying to survive in um, in here for the winter. So we put it out into the universe to either find a place for us to rent uh, or find a place for us to do a work trade. Whatever's in everyone's greatest and highest good. You know, Alder and I are in the firm belief of how may we serve, how may we help, but also there are things that we still need to learn, things that we still need to accomplish. And so I'm like, is it better for us to do a work trade so that we don't have to focus so much on the money? You know, we can, you know, give back for the rent. Uh, that tends to, this last, the one that we've been in the last six months has been, it hasn't been easy, of course, because it's been off grid, but it has been really rewarding. And most of the summer, Alder's been gone. And he, you know, he helps me out and brings me things or whatever, or he takes me out, you know, for adventures and shopping. But um, for the most part, I've been here alone, sleeping in the bed every night, being on my own, just me and Baba. And this last time that we kind of started to get back together, or it felt like we were kind of getting back together, just all of these things started to fall apart. And I was like, oh my gosh. And it made me go into this very old, very sad programming of feeling neglected, feeling unloved, feeling like, you know, asking questions that you think you want to know the answer to, but then when you get the answer, it's not the answer you anticipated. And so it's just been those kind of things, but again, it has been really rewarding because it's just had me push through more barriers and through more walls. Um, forgiving myself and forgiving you know my past loving myself and loving my past and being grateful for who I am now and who I've become in the process and being grateful that my partner even though you know some of the things that we've you know gone through said to each other had to confront whatever were hurtful and not easy I still am in so much gratitude because we both are changing a lot and I found myself lately starting to judge people and I don't feel that way. Like I really love everybody for who they are, but I started to judge the way they were judging me. <sighs> so we went on a work trade uh, interview. It was a working interview and we found this really cool magical place and I don't know if it's meant to be or it's not we've we've had so many over the years we've been through so many different experiences met so many different people that I always know that it's for a reason the best part about it was it was magical the people were beautiful and we both were paid very well so it was just all the way around it was just a magical day and at the end of the day we were both like that was awesome and kind of high-fiving each other and it was just really cool we divided and conquered the way that we do and we're such a good team that way um but we haven't heard anything and there's other people that are in the running and it's been difficult because it's one of the it's it's one that um I, 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 I see all sides to it i'm literally okay with no matter what happens because I realized that even though this is not easy living like this and I can't imagine going through another winter like this, however, however, I do know that there's also a amount of freedom that comes with this. The work trade job that we interviewed for um, has a lot of freedom, but there are definitely times where like we will not be able to you know, both of us leave the property at the same time kind of thing. And that's okay. You know, because I think we both thrive in that kind of, you know, where I'm like, yeah, go away for a few days, you know, like do your thing. Like I, I, I love it. But what I needed to work through and why I feel like that working interview was meant to be was I feel like it was meant to show us that it's never been about us together. It's been about us apart and what we need to work on individually, what we need to face individually, what we need to push through individually. And 
not judging the other person for what they're going through. You know, I was like, you know, we have to be kind. I'm an advocate for love. I'm like, look at, I have little, there's literally hearts all over my, my, I almost said my jammies, but they're, they're my everything pants. <laughs> they're my favorite sweatpants. They had an accident and they have a horrific stain on them. So I try not to show them, um, but they're still fine and they're still clean. It just, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really wear them out. <laughs> um, anyway, I digress. So there are many things that we are all going through and will continue to go through. And that's why I wanted to speak with you today to let you know that you're going to go through a lot of different things. And if you're a telepathic medium like I am, you're going to hear and feel and see things from people that you love, you admire, you respect. You're going to watch them change. Um, I had, and I have been having so many interesting experiences lately. It's almost like every time I leave the house, it's like one to like 15 lessons, you know, where you're just like, holy shit. And then I come back and like, really like, you know, take the time to, who am I, Zoolander? And be like, you know, I don't know, got to figure it out for yourself. You know what I mean? And, uh, and the more I've been alone, the more I'm recognizing just how powerful solitude is, just how powerful our own answers for self are. Because right now, so many people are out there searching for answers. So the reason why I, I really didn't get into the Biden-Harris uh, run. Uh, I, I had this feeling that the former president wasn't going to be the president again. I just had this really strong feeling, and I don't believe they're going to be again. I really don't. And if they do, it, it's going to be for a specific certain reason, and we will watch that play out. But the reason here's the reason why I don't believe they're going to. Because I feel like it's a human thing to be like, third time's a charm, or, you know, blah, blah, blah. No, it's like history repeats itself. And if history will repeat itself, I don't believe that a lot of people wanted the first woman who ran for president, bless her soul, she does. She had to go through a lot of hell to get there and dealt with a lot of bullshit when she was there. And she was the, she was the badass bitch that needed to be there to confront and, you know, whatever. What I saw in this debate, because I was really pulled to watch it and to watch it live, which was pretty, was, which was something else because I felt the power of the people. Um, I, I felt like I was at a prize fight. I was literally like, I, I, I put it up, you know, far away from me. But there were moments where I was like getting up and I was like, oh, and I was like pacing and I was like having moments where I was like, because I'm a human bullshit barometer. I felt lies from both of them, but her lies didn't feel like lies to me. Hers felt like things that she couldn't say. Things that she's bound that she cannot say. She is in office right now. She has a duty to uphold. Not to mention that her views are not the same as her party, a hundred percent. But she cannot say that right now because she is sitting in office. I am telling you, I worked in politics and I know I keep saying this to you guys because I'm like, I don't care if I worked there for a day or worked there for 10 minutes. I am telling you, I have seen things. I've been to political rallies. I've, I've helped put rallies together. I am telling you, they are scripted. There are things that they want them to do. There are things that they want them to say. There are, there are so many things. Why do you think he could not make eye contact with her? Never made eye contact with her. And not that I saw. Maybe when he shook her hand, but even so, it looked like he was looking down. There's different angles from it. But now with things that are out, it's like, who knows, you know, whatever. But there were things that were happening on both sides that I was like, I felt frustrated for her. I felt like she is, I, I, I feel like she was a really, there's a reason why he chose her to be his vice. Because he knew that she, they were, they've been grooming her. That's why she ran for Senate, right? Because like, she was a good fucking lawyer. When she came out, she was so nervous. She was so nervous. And all these people are talking about, oh, look at how nervous she was. I'm like, of course she was nervous. I'm like, it's a big fucking deal. You have millions and millions of people all over the world, all ages, all backgrounds, all, all levels of society, if you really want to get fucking technical. Like, she had so many people looking at her. That's so much fucking energy to hold. People don't even understand or realize what that's like. 
And with him, I, all I kept feeling, I swear, I feel like I, there were things that, that were coming up that I was like, holy shit. And because I was really grounded before I started it and I was like, I'm just going to go into this with an open mind. I'm going to, you know, whatever. I'm not going to judge it. I'm not going to, I'm like, I'm in self-care summer. I'm like, I don't want to deal with this shit. I honestly was waiting to watch it, but when they pulled me to watch it, I totally understood why I needed to watch it that way because I needed to be there live with everybody who else was watching it live. And for those who were going to watch it, like I felt it. And all I kept hearing around him was, shut the fuck up, be quiet, don't say anything, just, you know. Because if you notice, there are certain things that happened with retort. Everybody has to have so much ego to survive. She has ego, he has ego, you could see it, you could see what was happening. Hers was like, ugh, like hers is exasperation. And that tells me that she probably needs to be more grounded. She probably could stand with being, you know, more meditation. And who knows? Like, maybe she'll go more into that into that practice. Um, but with him, I felt like they were almost like saying, like, before he went out there, it was almost as if I felt like they were saying, like, you don't get cornered by her. She will wipe the fucking floor with you. She's quicker. She's smarter. So he had certain things to keep in his craw, whatever they call it, right? Like to keep in his head, to keep in his mind. That's why he reiterates the same things. That's why he brings out outlandish shit. He just wants to, he knows that fear is the driving force that's been happening on earth for so many millennia. He knows this. He practiced it. He watched his family do it. He watched everyone around him do it. You know, and honestly, bless his soul. Like he was born and raised in a time that was really gross. You know, we're pulling out of that. That's why you see the younger people now that look back at it and are like, this is some archaic shit. You know, I just, a uh, perfect example, Kate Hudson just released uh, her cover of Voices Carry from Till Tuesday. And I had wrote something where I was like, oh, I'm like, I love this version. I'm like, you made it your own, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I recently I had seen an interview where she had spoke about, uh, I don't know if it was about that song or I just saw a snippet of it, but long story short, I'm paraphrasing, but she has been, I know for a fact she's been in an abusive relationship and all artists work through their pain in a different way and through different mediums, pun intended, but like seriously. And I've worked in an art gallery too. So like I've worked with artists, you know, all, all through my life, I work at these jobs sometimes for a day, sometimes for a month, sometimes for years. And my family would be like, you know, you can't commit to anything. What are you going to do? And you know, you need a punch on and blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, I just don't see that for me. I feel like I'm going to be okay. Like I just always like, was like, no, I'm going to keep going. But I learned so much from these different professions, from these different people, from, you know, just all these different walks of life, going to different countries, traveling, meeting people, learning different languages, you know, like literally studying different languages. I studied Spanish, you know, for years through junior high and high school. And, you know, and then I took French before I went over to, to France at my local community center, just so that I can, you know, just be conversational with people. I'm like, I'm in your country. I want to be respectful. Then I get to France, I get to Paris, especially, and just watch the disgusting behavior of Americans I seen a lot of different countries behave disgustingly. I'm just saying for myself, for where I come from, you know, hearing all of these things, I'd always been in, I always loved the French, always loved Paris, never been there, but just always was drawn to it. And then when I got there, I know I lived there before. I know I lived in, in Europe before, for sure. Um, but just had all these moments where I was experiencing really grotesque human behavior by Americans, most of them rich tourists this, we, you know, this entitlement. And I'm like, listen, buddy, this isn't your fucking country. They don't have to learn English. Grow up. And that has been kind of like, I feel like as a child, I, I came by this very deep wrinkles, very naturally. I'm never going to get Botox or any of that shit. I fucking earned these, man. I earned these stripes. Yeah, you put some makeup on me and do my hair. I look like a fucking movie star. But this is who I am. And I earned this. Every scar, every tattoo, everything that everything that I've been through, I earned this. We all earned where we are. And however you want to live, I'm not judging. You want to get Botox, you want to change your face. Like, you know, Dolly, I saw this thing with Dolly recently and she's like, and Cher too. That's what they want to do. They're beautiful. I love them no matter what. 
you know, I've gotten to know their new faces, but I knew their faces as a child as their natural faces. I'm 52. I watched these women. I watched them change. I've watched women butcher themselves to, to fit in. But if history repeats itself, number one, we need a woman there. It's time for the fucking old patriarchal bullshit to go. So if he, I, I feel like if and when that were to happen, it would be because something would have to, you know, like I feel like people will incite because it's like, how can someone have all of these things put against them? It's like, so what about the years you weren't running for president that people sued you, that you claimed bankruptcy six times? You know what I mean? It's like he just always puts off the blame, his, you know, his narcissism, his ego. When I was watching the responses, some of them, you know what? He's like, I want to talk about my rallies. It's like, who the fuck cares? No, but you shouldn't care about your fucking rallies. When he said... I had to, I, I, I don't know, I, I turned my phone off, so I'm not going to go there, but I had to make this post because if you remember, he says in the video, or he says in the video, he says in the debate, um, I have some con, oh, that was, that's what it is. They're like, what is your plan? He's like, well, I have some concepts. He's like, oh, that, that, that Trump 2025, that's not mine. That's not mine. That's just what they came up with. <laughs> Then they're like, then what are your, you, I'm like, they're like, you're giving her shit and saying, and he's like, well, what has she done? I'm like, she's the fucking vice president. She, she, you know what I mean? I'm not saying they get his coffee and hold his briefcase, but do you know what I'm saying? I'm like, it's the vice president. <laughs> they're there as a backup in case the first one dies or something happens to them. Right. But also they have their own things and their own agendas that they work on, but it's all the same. I mean, there was just so many things that happened during the debate where I was like, are you, and, and I'm like, I, I would never use words like moron or idiot or whatever, but I will say this. I wanted to say, like, I was like screaming at the screen going, how uneducated are you? Like, honestly, come on. You know, like, and, and then when they were like, he's like, oh, they're all against me. It's like, no, cause they're like, there's nowhere in the United States where people are killing babies. That's not uh, live babies after they come out of the womb. It's not happening. It's not fucking happening. Stop saying shit like that because it's not fucking true. It's not true, you guys. It's not true. There are some shitty, horrible things that are happening behind the scenes. Yes. There's a lot of backdoor rapes and whatever. And it's like, doth do protest too much. So if somebody is saying too much about something else, they probably have their hand in it. So I don't believe two words that come out of his mouth. I really don't. I really don't. And people that do that, what, 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 and why I'm getting heated about it is that what concerns me is not about how many people vote for him. It's about how many people are so uneducated and so ungrounded that they can't just go back and do the research for themselves. It's all there for people to see, but how can they, when he's telling them it's fake, when he's, he has been saying this shit for fucking years. He's been planting the seeds, working with planners for years. They don't want their big billionaire businesses to go away. They've been controlling us like puppets for thousands of years. He talks, he talks, about, he's proud. He's proud of his connections with people that are, that are known criminals. He's proud of that. There's a way to fight for your country and your people without the murder and the vicious, you know what I mean? It's like, I feel like people like us are like, no, stop killing each other to prove a point. Stop killing each other to say, oh, whoever has the most guns win. Whoever has the most oil wins. Whoever, has... it's like, shut the fuck up. Like enough. I feel like we've just been dealing with children. And it's like, now I feel like the adults are going to step in. Even Kamala, she's, she's not stupid. She knows she has a big role to fill. She understands that. You can tell. That's why she's nervous. She's nervous because, you know, it doesn't matter if you have the truth on your side. You know, she misspoke and lied about things too. But I, again, when she was saying it, I almost felt like she didn't want to. It was almost like she was like, I have to. It's almost like she refrained from answering questions because with him, I was like, answer the fucking question. Answer the, he never answers the questions. He never answers the question. Unless... The other person says something about it, and if it's something negative about him, then he'll go in, but he's defending his behavior and his actions. It's not, there wasn't like, because the thing that was to me is, it's like, if you have concepts, you have concepts, well, you're going to step into office in four months and all you got is fucking concepts? If, like, why would you vote for someone like that? 
Not to mention that you've been the president before. So I feel like they're like, oh no, I'm just going to pick up where I left off and make it a hundred times worse. Because of people like him and all these other leaders, they're out for themselves and they're out for power and they're out for greed. And we are done with that. As human beings, we're like, fuck this bullshit. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. I mean, I don't know if you guys feel that too, but it's like, I know for myself, like, I'm just like, I, like, I can feel it. And if history repeats itself, and I'm going to keep saying that, then it would make sense that it would become a, and as much as I don't give a fuck about the color of my skin or someone else's color of their skin, but some people do. And some people look at that as a really, really, really big deal. And most people vote for what they are, what they believe in, or if they're hurt and they found someone who's going to champion their pain and suffering for revenge. There are so many levels to elections, you guys. There's so much that goes in the background of specialists and people telling them what to do, what to say. They are fucking puppets. And if you do not understand that, you need to research history. Yes, some presidents have taken it into their, you know, to do this and do that. But there's always a price to pay and there's always a backlash because it's we the people. And I believe that she has been working for the people. The DA's office, the district attorney, right? I'm not going to go again for somebody that showed me who they are and keeps showing us who they are. The thing, the, the lies after lies after lies after lies. When you start watching a bunch of his stuff and you see how he perpetuates the lies. He plants the seeds for his own fucking lies and then he, he keeps watering them and watering them until they grow so out of control. But they're weeds, man. They're not a beautiful, life-sustaining, you know, tree that's going to give us shade and, you know, whatever, fruit and whatever. No, it's like he plants weeds that get inside like little parasites in people's minds, like fear. And he's planting these little things. I'm not saying that both parties don't have dark shit because they do all do, but there's just some, some, just as many people of light who actually really do want to see the world change, not just our country, not to be like, we are the rulers. We are, we, it's like, I can't like, I was like there, I'm so sick and tired of the boys club. I'm so sick of the dick swinging. I cannot take it anymore. One minute he's revering. He's like, oh, how did that AI of the Swifties get into my stuff? Oh, is that Taylor voting for me? Ha ha ha. To her coming out and fully endorsing Kamala and him being like, ah, she ain't nothing. That's it. She watch, watch what happens to her. I'm like, I'm like, um, she's a self-made billionaire dude. So whether you fucking whatever, I was just like, like, just let it all play out. But what made me laugh the hardest out of all of his lies is when he came out of the debate with Biden he was like, I was obviously the winner. He's like, I'll go and I'll go again. Let's go again right now. He's like, I'll debate him again tomorrow, right now. You know, blah, blah, blah. He made this whole big thing about it. After the debate, Kamala said the same thing. Like she felt like she was more that, that she's like, I feel like we need another one. We need to get very serious and, and, and have some serious conversations and, you know, blah, blah, blah. He's like, I won. He goes, see, he goes, only people who lost, he's like, are begging for another because they want a rematch, right? He's like, he's like the pro fighters. He's like, when they lose, they're like, I want a rematch. I want a rematch. I want to prove myself. And I'm like, you just did the same fucking thing. It's infuriating. And it's more infuriating that people don't recognize that. The people believe what they want to believe. And Kamala's not white. She's not really anything. She's a mixture. We're all fucking mixtures. But it does go a long way. And it would make sense. Because if history repeats itself, and I say this with all grace and gratitude, no disrespect, but this is just the world we live in right now. Right now, she may as well be Obama in a skirt. She might as well be. And I mean that from like the outside perspective. If you're going to put a woman in office first, it better be a woman of, I'm not going to say color because I think that's such a weird term because we all have color. We all have certain, I mean, we all have melanin in our skin. It's just some have more than others. Um, but you know what I'm saying? 
this isn't about race. This isn't about me being a racist. This is about the fucking world being racist and the whole world looking at things and us trying to really understand what that means. And we need someone who was raised by a single parent. We need someone who understands what it's like to struggle. Because the rich boys club, there's nothing you have to fucking offer me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have, you know, people used to say the thing they love the most about me is they're like, dude, you can dine with the queen or you can hang with the homeless. They're like, you know how rare that is? And I'm like, I, and over my lifetime, I do understand that. So I've been around some of the richest people in the world, billionaires. I have been around, I have spent time with people who are on the streets some have always been there. They were raised on the streets like their parents were home free. And some who got there by happenstance, by things that happened throughout their life, you know. I feel like I want my phone out of there for some reason. And I believe in my heart. We need someone like Kamala in there right now. You think she, you know... Yes, Hillary had to deal with the boys club, but she was still a white, blonde-haired, blue-eyed American girl. Didn't make it any easier for her. I'm a blonde, blue-eyed, you know what I mean? I am her in some ways, you know what I mean? So trust me, I've been violated. I've been raped. I've been abused. I've been groped. I've heard horrific, horrible, sexist things said to me. I watched a Notting Hill the other day. It was only from 20 years ago, and I hadn't seen it in forever. And I was like, oh, I want to watch this movie. And just some of the things and like the mistreatment and the misogyny. And it's like, you know, we still have a long way to go. But I don't believe spirit would bring us this far, especially in the year of a dragon, to only bring us this far. Otherwise, I feel like Hillary would have won. And if the third time is a charm, then I guess we'll see what happens. And maybe, you know, we'll, we'll just see what happens. But... I am proud of her. I feel like she did the best she could with what she had to work with. I wouldn't be surprised if someday she writes a book and tells her side of it, you know, once she's, because you don't even know, I had to sign an NDA, which is a non-disclosure agreement. I had to sign an NDA for working at Planet Hollywood. I can only, I just, I had to sign NDAs when I worked in politics. So I can only imagine the novel of paperwork or the uh, agreements or the things they can and cannot do when they're in office. So, you know, that's also why I feel like he was bringing up such stupid things or saying things or bringing it like, oh, they're eating dogs. It's like, why are you talking? The things he was talking about, I'm like, I'm like, this is, this is what's sad about you. You still have nothing fucking to say. You're how old you've been through, how much you've been the president and you still don't have anything concrete. No, because you don't want to know what he's going to really do. Because if you knew, you would never fucking put him in office. You would never give him the keys again to your home because the White House is your house and my house. If you're American, it is our house. It is our home. Haven't you ever heard that? You know, people don't even really know what the laws are. Look at the laws. Read the Constitution. There are a lot of people who want to let go of the Constitution and start over. I can see us going in together, voting on revisions to come into the future. They knew. That's why there's so many addendums and clauses and things like that. That's why we have bills and, and you know. But when we have Congress and Senate that are run by one party more than the other, that's the problem too. It's about breaking down the system from the top down. It's got to trickle down. It's got to be a norm that women run for president. My best day will be when I cannot decide which woman to vote for because they're both so awesome. <laughs> and we need a woman right now. The world has gone to shit from the boys and their greed. It's the divine masculine that's just gotten out of control. It's not like we're trying to come in and like, you know, no, even men see that. I know so many men who are voting for Harris because they're just like, no, like it's gone too far. I, I saw um, there was this guy who went out, I, you know, I always like to kind of check the facts afterwards and see, you know, because even that, the fact checkers, 
I mean, they all have different things to say. So it's like, I mean, it's just, you really have to use your discernment and like your own intuition to be like, okay, like what feels good? What doesn't feel good? But this uh, guy was going out. I've seen comedians do it, but this guy was very serious and he was going out and he has a popular YouTube channel and he just tries to get the facts from all sides. He's, he's really like, I'm in the middle kind of thing. And he, his parents were immigrants. And so he's like trying to look at it from, you know, from the whole perspective. And there was a, a beacon, a beacon shine of light that came through for this man or from this situation where this man was wearing a Trump shirt and he went up to him and he said, Hey, Oh, I said his name. That's okay. I sent him love. I sent him love. I sent him love. Um, I've been calling him Donnie cause I'm like, I mean, it's hard for me to, I give him the respect that he was the president, but I don't really feel like he won. I do. I definitely feel like there was something that went wrong there. Maybe he did. Maybe he didn't. I'm not going to storm the fucking, you know, <laughs> uh, capital for it. But, um, but I don't know, whatever, whatever. It doesn't matter at this point. It doesn't matter. It's over. It's fast. But I will say this is that when the interviewer said, who do you feel like won the debate? And he's like, Harris, he's like, I have to give it to her. He's like, I have to give it to her. He's like, are you still going to vote for Trump? And he's like, yeah, he's like, but I have to give it to her. He's like, she did a good job. He's like, <clears throat> and he's like, what do you mean in what way? And he's like, and he basically said in so many words, and he was very careful with his words and he was educated. And he said, she's a lot more intelligent than I gave her credit for. And he said, she's a lot more educated than I realized. And he's like, I didn't realize she was a, a prosecutor. And I was like, that's what I mean when people, it's like, how do you not know? So you're just going to vote for this person because they're, you know, my daddy was a Republican. My grandpappy was a Republican. I hate that kind of bullshit or same for the Democrat, right? It's like, who are you going to vote for? I feel like RFK kind of threw himself in there too, to just kind of like throw the balance off of like, you know, what's happening. Cause I'm like, really? You genuinely, genuinely think he's the better candidate. I'm like, that's interesting. Then he doesn't really understand like what's happening right now, in my opinion. Um, but there's, there's just so many things that are going on and maybe I'm wrong. You know, maybe I'm under some spell too. Maybe I drank the Kool-Aid and I don't even realize it someday. I'm going to look back and be like, wow, I was so wrong. You know? Um, but as of right now, I just don't see that happening. And I, and I think a lot of it is because I spent so much time with myself this year and getting really quiet and feeling like it's like, do I feel like Kamala is the answer? No, but I feel like she's a good start. And I feel like she has a lot to learn, but I get the vibe that, you know, she's got ego too. I mean, you have to be in politics, like to be a lawyer and whatever, and all these things like in politics for sure, you have to have a good healthy ego. Otherwise you're not going to be able to make it with these people, but you cannot have your egos make the decisions for you. That's the difference. The ego helps you to survive. The ego helps you to stand your ground and keep your boundaries, right? For self-love. That's what ego does. But it's when you rule everything by your ego and it gets, that's when it gets out of balance. When it's like, um, you're making choices because somebody hurt my feelings and watching him. It's like, he's such a man child. It's sad. And it, it really genuinely is sad when he was like, my dad didn't give me my money. He's like, I did blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, but you know, before when he was running against Biden, you know, you're talking about an old school politician who'd been a politician for a long time. Didn't matter what he was before. He'd been a politician for so long. Nobody remembered him for anything else, but it's different with her. You know, she's younger and she's been through different things. So, um, you know, and I love how much her husband genuinely loves her. You can see it and how he respects her and, and supports her and is privilege to be first gentleman, you know, like, like he's like, hell yeah, man, I'm going to support her. She's the fucking bee's knees. She's got, I think, I think that we've only scratched the surface of who she is and what she can really do. And I think once she's completely disconnected from him and it's her own cabinet and her own people, and she gets to decide who's around her, I think she's going to do some really special things. And to laugh off climate change is ridiculous. Because even though the planet naturally goes through climate change, it's a natural thing. We can see it from, that's why archaeologists are uncovering things that have been, you know, because of what happens, right? The earth tilts on its axis. It does have things, but we have definitely sped it up. It's called chemical reaction. 
Ever do an experiment in science class? So you keep fucking with the natural environment. You keep fucking with natural resources and thinking that you know better as man. Keep fucking with, with Gaia. Keep fucking with her and see what happens. See what happens. So we're just wanting to bring the divine feminine back in. We're done. We're tired of this bullshit. And then going after Taylor. I mean, it's so sad. I want to be like, you sad old man. Like, you sad old man. I mean, I know she's grown and she's 34 and all that. But there's just this part of me that's like, I mean, that's where I'm like, I don't want to judge him. But it's just sad. I'm just like, dude, like he's holding on for dear fucking life. And they all are. They're holding on to an old world that is crumbled underneath their feet. And they know it. And there's nothing. So from now in real time, September 12th, from now until at least after the election, it's going to be fucking a little nutty. So stay as grounded as possible. Stay away from the bullshit, bullshit and the rhetoric. Use your own discernment, your own intuition to decipher what's true and what's not. And also if you're feeling something against anybody, ask yourself why you're feeling that. Because if you're having a shadow thing, there must be something that's rising in you. Lately, I've been having these things where like, I, I was like, well, fuck you then throw the baby out with the bathwater kind of, you know, thing, um, mentality with my partner where I was like, I thought things were good. I'm like, you can't fucking keep it. It was, it was like, I was being such a bully. Like I was just like, you can't get your shit together. I mean, I would hear these things coming out of my mind, you know, like I wasn't saying I'm to him, but in my mind, I was just like, why can't he just get his shit together? Like, why can't he's so, so much stronger than this. And, and I'm judging his fucking process and I'm judging his, like, he needs to be exactly where he needs to be right now. And what a bully that would make me to even push him, you know? But I was like, I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to blah, blah, blah. But what I realized is that, no, there's just so much happening. So what I do want to do as we close this out is I want to read you. Interesting. It says, Wish You Were Here was the ninth studio album by the English rock band Pink Floyd, released on 12 September 1975. Through her harvest records... Oh, through Harvest Records in the UK and Columbia Records in the US, they're first for the label. So um, <clears throat> there's that. But then um, also Gold Dust Woman came on right before that. The first song that came on, I was like, is there any inspiration or anything you'd like to say to everybody, you know, because I was feeling like the self-care summer and self-care September. I feel like it's basically like all of us, like it's not just summer. I feel like they're trying to show us like just you know, get through what we need to get through. You know what I mean? But keep your vibrations high, get out and vote, you know, um, that kind of thing. Like I even said to my partner, I was like, you know what? I said, I, I, I wasn't going to vote, but I was like, I feel like I need to, I feel like, because I feel like I believe she will be the first female president. And I want to say I was a part of that. Even if, even if a part of that was doing it through this, I also want to cast my vote because I do think it's important. And I do believe that there's so much fakery and fuckery that's going to be like pulled back between now and the election that I feel like it will, I just feel like a lot of shit's about to happen. That's all I'm going to say. So, so the first song was Serenity and then the next one was Gold Dust Woman by Fleetwood Mac, which is, you know, excuse me, um, Divine Feminine, Divine Masculine, Balance, right? Interesting. By the way, uh, right before I went to that, I was pulled to read this. Life is so much simpler when you stop explaining yourself to people and just do what works for you. So that's for somebody. Also, it's 1240, which is um, also the number seven, and there's 88% <clears throat> on my phone. So everything goes in cycles of seven, so that's interesting. And eight eight we had the eight eight portal, but like I feel like when the eight eight portal we just had the nine nine portal. Um, but n remember, next year is going to be really powerful. It's going to be the nine 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 portal next year, and we're just getting closer and closer and closer. The next year will be October ten 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 portal. So there's a lot of cool things that are going to be happening, and then the eleven 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 portal. You know what I mean? Like right because it would be forty nine and then twenty five. Yeah, and then yeah, and then. 2020 20, and then 12 12 12 and I feel like we're gonna go into this very like interesting world 
and we get to be here and be a part of it, which is really neat. So, okay, so the lyrics to Gold Dust Woman are these. Also, it says remastered in 2004, if that means anything to anybody. Like it might be that maybe, which was 20 years ago, maybe you need to go back to 2004 and there's something there that we need to look at or need to, there's something there. I'm like trying to remember, well, 2004, I'm trying to remember, um, I think that was, oh yeah, that was, so that was Bush. That was Bush Jr. I mean, we just had the uh, anniversary of September 11th and the VMAs were on the same day and like Taylor like paid homage to that. That was like the first thing she said and she was like, let's, let's, let's just not forget that that's more important than what's really happening here today. But she was, you know, very interesting. So much and the way she strategically planned everything. I mean, she's a planner. I mean, I don't know what her full chart is, but I know I'm a triple Sag and we definitely like keep our shit. I think her moon's in cancer for some reason, but anyway. Okay, I digress. So here we go. So here are the lyrics for Gold Dust Woman. Also, they're saying the reason why she keeps coming up is she's kind of Wonder Woman right now. She's got that goddess energy. She's even like tall and like, you know what I mean? Like statuesque, like a goddess. Like she's got, I wouldn't be surprised if she's got like a bit of Kali mixed with a bit of Isis and you know, there's a lot of cool shit going on. Even her, like she needed to be taunted by, by all of these bullies to toughen her up and make her strong, you know? So thank you, Scooter Braun. Thank you, Trump. Thank you, Kanye. Like, you know what I mean? Like they just fucking made her stronger. And, and you know, also I wouldn't be surprised if, um, reputation, I think that's the next album that she was going to put out. I wouldn't be surprised if somehow like that is like put into the mix soon at like her next row of concerts, you know, as she like really pushes the the thing for Kamala. Cause you know what? There's nothing they can do to stop her. And she's going back on tour during the election time and she'll be there till after the election time. So very interesting. Gold dust woman, magic woman. So it says rock on gold dust woman. Take your silver spoon Dig your grave, heartless challenge, pick your path and I'll pray. Wake up in the morning, see your sunrise, loves to go down, lousy lovers pick their prey, but they never cry out loud, cry out. And then it says, did she make you cry, make you break down, shatter your illusions of love? And is it over now? Do you know how? Pick up the pieces and go home. Rock on, ancient queen. Follow those who pale in your shadow. Rulers make bad lovers. You better put your kingdom up for sale, up for sale. Well, did she make you cry, make you break down, shatter your illusions of love? And is it over now? Do you know how? Pick up the pieces and go home. And so she, re she repeats that now. Um, and then she says, this is the best pale shadow of a woman black widow pale shadow of a dragon dust woman pale shadow of a woman black widow pale shadow she's a dragon gold dust woman motherfucker like that's it man pick up the pieces and go home boys you're done you've had your run like that's the thing free will isn't always free and when you put people in slavery and you keep enslaving them and their ancestors, that goes into their blood and bone. I would love to fucking know what her family tree is. I'd love to know a lot of people's family trees, Kamala's too. Like, I would love to know, like, you know, where their roots come from. And like, you know what I mean? Like, for all we know, like, you know, maybe his family somewhere down the line, like she had her family and slaves and this is her like, you know, see you later, buddy. Right, because you can only do so much for so long and your shadows will be revealed. So this eclipse season, there's no, I mean, the first song was Serenity. So I was like, oh, that's cool. And I'm like getting into it. I'm feeling all like calm. I'm like, oh, this is gonna be nice. I'm like, I guess we're just gonna talk about light things. <laughs> and then Gold Dust Woman came on and then Wish You Were Here came on. So interesting, right? So uh, I want, so your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to look up the lyrics to Wish You Were Here but I will tell you, there's a part where he says, did you trade your um, ashes for trees? Did you trade hot, trade hot ashes for trees, right? Meaning like that you would rather like have like, you know, a beautiful planet, you know, you don't want a beautiful planet. You'd rather like burn it up and like turn it into what you want. Chop down forests, chop down trees that are thousands of years old. When we know now that a 50 year old tree 
you know, can be just as big, but the wood's not as good, is it? And it's not as, you know what I mean? It's like all these things that we find out. That's why we're protecting certain species, protecting. It's like, no, you can't go in with all your money and your guns and go and shoot fucking, you know, go and hunt an endangered species. What in what in what universe would you want to do something like that? Like to me, it's like I don't even my brain can't even comprehend that. My brain that loves everybody can't comprehend why someone would want the head of an animal to look at and say, I murdered that creature. <laughs> look at me and my big gun. Yeah, well, why don't you go against that motherfucking tiger without a gun? And let's see what happens. Yeah, you'd be dead. You'd be dead. The only way you'd be alive is if they were full. And then they may keep you around as a toy until they're hungry again. That's what they've been doing with us. So, you know, I love the part where Kamala goes, she's like, you know, um, I'm sorry, I can't think of his first name, but um, Mr. Waltz, she goes, um, she's like, Waltz and I both have guns. Like, we're not trying to take people's fucking guns away. Like, stop making up lies. She's like, that's not what we're doing. That's not what we're saying. It's like assault weapons literally have no fucking any weapon because I guess you could say any weapons an assault weapon, but I'm saying like, what in the fuck do you need that for? What do you need it for? Why do you need to fire off a hundred rounds, you know, per second or whatever the fuck that is? I don't know. But you know what I mean? Like, what do you need that for? If not as a killing machine, I don't like hunting with guns. I don't like hunting at all. I'm a vegan. I don't, I don't feel like, you know, I feel like animals give themselves, they give their life. Some people thrive on animal products. Some like myself do not. We're all different. They've been trying to tote us as the same for so long, which is why we're in the fucking trouble that we're in now. And the rest of us, the adults are like, all right, enough. Enough, enough, enough dick swinging. I don't care who can spit further. I don't care who's, stop. I don't care how many girls that you've raped and conquered or, or boys. I don't care. It's gross. Stop trying to lord your power over somebody. Imagine if all of the, the, those people took that same energy to lift people up. We're always going to have shadow. People are always going to make poor choices. That's how we learn as human beings. But what we don't learn, or what, what I, what I want to say is we don't learn when we com, com, do the same things over and over. That's the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. You're not going to get a different result from the same thing. Make America great again. What you want to... What's so great about it? What, tell me what's so fucking great about our division and us penned against each other. Tell me what's so great about that. I don't know anything. I don't know what's great about that. Tell me what's so great about people starving and other people having more than they will ever fucking be able to spend in a lifetime. People who are responsible with their wealth and pass it on to others not people who hoard their wealth. I don't want anyone making fucking decisions for me or my country for somebody who is out for number one and has only ever proved that they are out for number one. And if you think he's going to automatically change or that he's become nice or people are like, he's just such a kind man. I'm like, are you insane? I'm like, have you ever watched him? And I don't know why no one is saying anything about his, he, there's nothing wrong with his ear. He went like this. He could have had one of those power pack things that, you know, the squibs that they use for movies that have the blood. Why has no one talked about that? Why has no one said that like he doesn't have a scar or a mark or, you know what I mean? It's just, I'm just so tired of it. And if he, I'm not saying I want him assassinated. I'm just saying if he had an attempt on his life, then there's a reason for it. And if he was supposed to be dead, he would be. I'm, I, I would, I, I'm 99.9% .9 sure he had something to do with it. I can't be 100%, but my, everything in my gut tells me that because I don't believe hardly anything that comes out of his mouth and his energy exudes 
ego. I mean, he's just so, I mean, just the facial expressions he was making, like when she'd say things, it's like, you could tell he wanted to say more, but they were like, I'm about to like, shut your fucking mouth. And because like I told you guys, I worked for a person I worked for, well, I've worked for incumbents, but I'm going to tell you something. I literally worked for someone who was going for a high ranking position, the governor, which is one step below the fucking president. And they literally, my team of people, I was in a team of people that were like, don't open your fucking mouth. I had to wear skirts when they came to the office. Come on. I, I just saw so much fakery and fuckery, you guys. And I can only imagine how much more there is. And as and I've always been this. I've always been a telepathic medium. I just didn't understand. That dude was fucking slimy. I didn't want him anywhere near me. I was like, ew. I can't. I, I mean, ugh. I can't. There's just so much. So, but that being said, I still love them. And I send them love. And I know that they're playing their part. They're playing their role. They're playing their role. They're doing what they're supposed to do. Drink some water. They're doing what they're supposed to do. Spirit bless them for doing their job. I commend them for doing their job. That's my door. It's swinging open. Um, but enough is enough. We need to rebuild our trust in ourselves. People are, don't even trust themselves anymore. How can you vote for this person and trust yourself? And people are like, I'm just not going to vote at all. I mean, I've done that too. And I've been that person and I've not voted. And that's your right too. You don't have to. You don't have to. If you don't like her, you feel like, oh, she's, you know, whatever. Like, you don't have to. But I'm telling you right now, like, just like, just like Taylor, like, I'm casting my endorsement and I'm absolutely going for Kamala. We need it. We need it more than people realize. And I want to see what she can do without the boys club. I want to see what she can do. I want to see what a, a divine feminine energy can do. Cause she's also very masculine, which is what we need too. people are like, Oh, she doesn't have children. I'm like, she does have children. She has stepchildren. My stepfather was every bit of my father, even though he had his own sons, but I'm just saying like, he was still a father and he was a good father. He wasn't a perfect father, but he was a good father to me when I needed a father. So, um, when my biological father was absent and I remember the first time my biological father heard me call him dad. And he, he said, I feel like I just took a bullet to the heart. And I was like, well, I'm sorry, but I call him as I see him. If you'd been in my life, if you'd been, you know, whatever, I'm like, I still call you dad, you know, but those titles are earned and titles have to be earned. He put in his bid, he was there and that's what happened. He doesn't get another, and as far as I'm concerned, he doesn't get another shot, especially because we all fucking know he incited the riots. Like we all know he's such a sore loser and, and he's, he's not telling you things cause he doesn't want you to know, please hear that. He's, he's go do your research. He is, he really genuinely believes in this one party system, like where he's the leader. So was fucking Hitler. And people are like, oh, I'm like, you think, you think, no, you think these guys want to lose their fucking threshold. You think these old families, the Rothschilds and all that, you think they want to lose their money. You think they want to lose the pulse on the fucking planet. They don't. You think they want you to go back to small businesses. They don't. You think they want a fucking woman to make decisions. They don't. They don't. They want to rule. They want to dictate. They want to tell you because that's what they've been doing. You think you have freedom. Freedom's not free. Not in America. Nowhere really. Until we stand up for ourselves and say no. People are tired and they're exhausted. She's there for a reason. I really, I really genuinely, I'm going to put my energy into that because I feel that's what needs to happen. Now, you know, things could come out and I can be proved wrong. You know, when it comes to this kind of stuff, I only go so far. I just go by my feelings. And all I can tell you is that when I was watching the debate, I felt like she did the best she could with what she had. And I think he was hiding because he doesn't want people to know. 
he doesn't want people to know. He he wants people to think certain things, but he doesn't want you to know the truth. And they told him to be quiet because when his ego gets when his ego runs rampant, that's when he makes really big mistakes. I wouldn't be surprised. That's why I said I go. I felt like it was a price fight. Like, how gross are you? Why aren't you facing your... She kept looking at him. She was looking at him. She looked at us, and she looked at the moderators, but she was looking at him. She's like, I'm talking to you, bitch. Like, fucking talk to me. He's using his programming tactics. He can't look at her. Because it would get a rise out of him. She's a big mirror, right? Anyway, I didn't mean to get so political, but... I just want you guys to, you know, use your own discernment and look at like what's happening out there. And, you know, eclipse season, a lot of shit's going to be unraveled and seen. So take it easy. I implore you to take it easy. Take it slow. Please, 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 please take it easy. Take it slow. I've been hearing that from spirit. September, you know, I used to call it, I used to tote it self-care September. We had self-care summer. So just keep going and the self-care energy get through this eclipse season but isn't it interesting that the eclipse season will be in the ending of of it in the shadow as we're going into the uh election you know we're in election season but as, as it starts to amp up we still are going to be going through this so just hang in there hang in there all i keep saying is spirit please just let the facts illuminate themselves you know whatever's in the greatest and highest good of each individual person i don't want to force anything that's what's been going on in our in our world and in our on our planet you know this like we've been a slave planet for a long time what are you watching what are you putting yourself in front of watch things that make you feel good genuinely and if you're feeling rough work it out on your own you if you go online you're gonna find people who are gonna feed your fire you're gonna find people who are gonna you know when I go and see these like comments below things just the things that people there's just so much hate out there let them ride in their hate. You ride in your love bubble. So in real time, tomorrow is Friday the 13th, which 13 is the number of the goddess people. Why do you think they took it out of things? I mean, there's a lot of buildings that were built that don't even have a 13th floor. That's how fucking terrified this very, very sick divine masculine is that they did everything they could to make women breeders, whores, insignificant, that we don't have a purpose, that we don't have a brain in our head. When that, when I saw that guy, that interview, when he said, I have to give it to her. He's like, I have to admit, he's like, I didn't think she was that intelligent. It's like, yeah, because you know what? Don't ever discount your enemy or the person you are deeming as the, the enemy. Don't rule people out, man. Don't rule people out. I have a feeling she's going to be the dark horse that's going to come out and show everybody something completely different. And I, for one, am excited to see that unfold. Because, you know what, at the, at the end of the day, what's supposed to happen will happen. And it doesn't matter. And I could say this to you and I could put it out into the universe. But at the end of the day, our creator, the gods, goddesses, the ancestors, like they've been laying the foundation for a long time. So we're going to watch this circus unfold. But do your best to just, even when they're saying things that you're like, what the fuck? Like I find, I went from like being mad and yelling at the screen to laughing because I'm like, this is fucking ridiculous. Just look at the ridiculousness of it with love and light in your heart and just be like, oh man, like they're really trying. You're going to see some really fucking weird things and a lot of things are going to come out. So anyway, I love you. Love yourself. Love each other. And Take good care of yourselves and each other during this time and stay in the highest vibration you can in the divine feminine because she's here to stay for a minute because we need her. Until next time, I love you. Yay, Kamala, yeah, Kamala and Wells. <laughs>